afternoon, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to keep talking about how to make YouTube videos, especially the setup on the light, sound and the camera. So in the past two videos, we talked about what types of gears to get and what types of content you might be interested to create as an artist and some successful artists on YouTube. And perhaps you feel more inspired and more confident after watching those videos. If you like those videos, make sure you give a like. And if you have not yet subscribed, hit the subscription button. It means a lot to me. So today in the next 10 minutes, I will talk about my setup personally, how I make these videos and how you perhaps can do it as an artist to showcase your art for tutorial, vlogs and all kind of content that you wish to make. So it's very simple. Usually what I do is just three steps. I check the light, the sound and the camera. So totally it will just take me three to five minutes at most. But for a um, first timer, perhaps it will take you a couple of hours. Make sure that you re reserve half a day, perhaps a Sunday afternoon, just sit down in the corner of your studio or a uh, space at your home. Make sure you reserve a nice quiet space for those videos and bring all your gears and start playing with it. And make sure you do plenty of test runs before finding the optimal result that you want. Usually I start with light. It's very simple. I use a three point light setup. It's very classic. One on the left, one on the right and one for the hair. It's called a kicker. So these three lights are very cheap. I bought them for like 50 bucks the whole set. So you can get that on Amazon or a local store. I, I know some people are using only window light, but then you're very limited to, you know, recording it on a sunny day and uh, you, you can't do it at night because then you're running out of light. And sometimes they have clouds, so your camera will be like, you know, bright, dark, bright, dark, and it can feel very bothering, especially if you're painting and you have to adjust the camera and stop painting. It's more troublesome than just buy this 50 bucks light and set it up. So you can also use it to paint so that you get the right colors. It is a lot better than using an alternative lighting like a lamp or something else. So totally recommend get them and it comes with tripod and diffuser and everything you need to just plug and play. The next thing I do is the sound, but if you are in this new environment for the first time, then this is probably the first thing you should check because a lot of times there are some white noise that is hidden for you and you don't really notice that, especially you have not made videos before. You don't know what kind of sound that might be picked up by your microphone or by your camera. So make sure you test the sound first if you're using this location for the very first time. And the sound is very simple. I'm using a shotgun mic and usually there is only like one button just on and off. But of course mine has uh, two buttons with a plus and minus for different sound levels. And it's, you just need to make sure that it's charged. Make sure you have spare batteries. I use the chargeable ones so I can just charge it whenever it runs out and then plug it all the way into the camera. Make sure that it's plugged in all the way. I have made early on in my filmmaking adventure, I have made some really silly mistakes. Like I was recording the whole time. I didn't have it plugged or all the way into the camera. So it was um, a terrible sound quality from on camera, built in mic. And perhaps you're happy with your built in mic. And some camcorders has, you know, fair uh, built in mics. And just try it out before you make your first video. Just do plenty of test runs. Now you have the light and the mic all set. Now the next I will move on to the camera. I'm using a Canon 70D. For any DSLR, it's more or less similar. If you're using a camcorder, it's mainly just, you know, to put it on auto and it will roll. But if you're using a DSLR, you do need to spend quite some time and it has a more steep learning curve than a camcorder for the first time where you do this setup. First, let's go to the SO. Usually I do 125, 160 indoor and maximum you can do 200. You just set it to 200 for now and see how it goes. And then let's move on to the uh, aperture. Usually I do 2.8 if I'm shooting my face. Otherwise it can be 3.5 if I want to have, let's say, more areas in the screen to be equally focused. Yeah, then definitely 3.5 is good to start with. And now I go to the shutter speed and usually I leave it on 30 and sometimes you can set it to 50. I think 50 is the recommended standard 
for a frame rate of 25 frames per second but I use 30 because uh, I don't have a lot of movement as you can see I'm just quite static uh, indoor vlogs tutorials 30 40 50 and everything is okay I'm in Europe right now so I shoot 25 frames per second but usually everything is okay because YouTube uh, can take any kind of format they are quite uh, universal in terms of formats so either way is okay now let's set to the focus and I point out a square in the middle of my screen and then I just focus on that and it's tracking me uh, but in only tracking this center of the frame so whatever I put in the center for example this is a little tripod that I'm using and if I'm putting this tripod in the center and it will just try to focus on the tripod but if I'm moving this thing away it doesn't follow this uh, object you can also choose this tracking function and you can also track a face the different kind of uh, ways to track depending on the camera that you buy let's say the more expensive the gear is the more options you have and also the newer gears also have plenty of options they're quite smart whatever setting that you think is best for you but be aware that if you are painting realistic portraits make sure that you don't do the face tracking because sometimes you are talking and the camera goes to the face that you're painting which is great it means that you paint it very realistically but then uh, you're talking and you're like hey hey focus on me and then it goes to the painting it's it's a bit troublesome now let's move on to the sound setup and usually I set it to auto because I'm in a more or less controlled environment that I know that it won't go crazy and I don't want to spend too much time you know adjusting the sound all the time I just put it to auto and I know the sound is good enough and then I just keep it running perhaps you're in a more noisy environment and you want to do some like noise filtering uh, but the best way is still to get the best sound from the original source that is you so you just have to shout yes shout speak really loud and then the sound will be higher in volume and if you find it a lot of uh, popping sound because you're too close and you're shouting you know this kind of popping sound will pronounce peter uh, yeah then you can get this that is an uh, anti-popping net uh, usually used for uh, vocalists and podcasters and I, I bought it online for like uh, 35 bucks so it's all metal it's really really sturdy and I think it can last more than me perhaps and also you can use a dead cat or wind shield in case if you have a window open to ventilate because when you paint sometimes you need to ventilate and otherwise you can use a different type of mic like a lavalier mic or condenser if you're using um, this for a podcast as well if you're doing a tutorial and when you want to do some podcasts then yeah then you can use the condenser mic but then again if you're doing a artist tutorial and this kind of stuff the best is with the video so it doesn't make much sense to have a excellent quality sound but sound only so in most of the case I think to have a good image quality is way more important than having a good sound quality and I know a lot of people don't even have a vocal in this um, the whole video they just put a music and then they just uh, paint in front of the camera although you can use a uh, very nice audio in the background and just to go with you painting and you don't have to speak to the camera if you feel not so comfortable yet speaking to the camera but I totally recommend you to use your own voice instead of music unless you have a reliable source of the music and you have the disclosure of to use for commercial purposes for this copyright from the music owner otherwise you can get into serious trouble and YouTube can uh, take out the advertisement and monetization from your channel if you run into this kind of trouble and for, for you I think it's totally not worth it because music is just a cherry on the cake not even the cherry on the cake it's like a syrup dressing on the cake you don't really have to have it you can totally speak to the camera and just use your own voice and you can have a better engagement so that people know you better and they can start like you as a person as an artist and like your art and it's a great way to get patronage as well on patreon so totally uh, try to use your own voice uh, whenever you could so this is my setup and how I do my videos if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me leave me a comment below I will get back to you ASAP and see you tomorrow